right. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? I see that there is your fluffy friend right next to you, Josephine. <laughs> yes, he's a bit shy, but oh no, he is not. Hello, yeah. Huh? Let's, oh, let's see there. how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> We have a third moderator filling in for Alba today because she's traveling to a conference, I believe. So busy, busy yeah. conference season, but we're here. Javi's here. Um, <laughs> and uh, we also have a really awesome guest, but maybe let's first introduce our topic. Arisa, do you want to give it a go? Yeah, sure. So yeah, hi everyone. And today we are going to talk about, you know, women and non-binary, you know, like folks, our friends in tech communities. Um, I know it sounds a little bit like broad um, topic, but we wanted to make it, you know, like a little bit more open space so that, you know, like not just women and non-binary people, but everyone, literally everyone would feel comfortable to exchange their opinions and to, you know, like have a chat um, casually together with us. Uh, we have a special guest, uh, which you already might be, might, might be able to guess from the chat because I see that she wrote <laughs> a comment to say hi. So yeah, <laughs> I hope you all are excited about. Yes, let's bring her on. Our guest is, I don't even know how would you, you would pronounce it in <laughs> English, leicht eckig is the German pronunciation. It's Ramona. <laughs> Um, yeah. And let's bring her on. Hi, Ramona. Thank you so hello, much. Hello, hello, Ramona. Thank you for having me. I'm so proud to be here, especially for this topic today. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> We're so happy we could make it work. We know you're also really, really busy. Um, but before yeah. we get started, maybe do you want to give like a really quick introduction who you are, how we're po people can find you if they can't spell your German Twitter? No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the cutest, it's the cutest name ever. It is Thank cute. You. I can so, spell. <laughs> it's okay. I guess when it comes to English, you could say liked eckig. Like like eckig something mm. like that and it's actually a pun of my last name because my last name in german pronunciation is schwering so schwer like heavy and ring like ring and leicht is light like heavy eckig oh. like um having coriness ring okay round. how is even so... cuter i didn't believe it was possible okay oh. <laughs> oh, thank you yeah i i like bad puns um People like to call me pun queen sometimes because they're really bad. <laughs> okay, but I wanted to introduce myself. So I'm happy to be here, happy to meet you in the chat and basically whoever, like from which place ever you want to see it today. I'm like Ramona or you can call me Mo. I'm working as a developer advocate at Of Zero by Okta. It's my first month, so that's a point where I was a little busy, but I'm happy that I made it. And um why this topic is really important to me, especially this month, is because I have been a mentor this month for the Women Developer Academy, which is a program to support women in tech by Google. So um, I was a mentor. I was really happy to teach people there. And um, yeah, besides from that, I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies and a woman tech maker ambassador and a Cypress ambassador. So I love communities. So yeah, wow. I guess I don't want to talk too much about myself so I guess that's it <laughs> oh no wow. this dream is also part of it like you know to get to know about you and what do you do you're a great job because I mean like I really had a you know like nice chance to quickly talk with you like in one of the previous conferences um it was also in Germany Freiburg, and I wished I really had enough time because I had to already catch my train so I even missed your talk but later on I watched you know like a couple of your past talks and yeah, I wanted to, you know, like kind of um, say that you're 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 an artist too because your slides are hand drawing, right? With, with yeah, hand drawing. Yeah. Can you yeah. guess the reason? Like one of the main reasons why I do that? It's pretty boring, actually. Mm. So. <laughs> oh no, I don't believe that. Um, I'm not sure, like, why you do that because of your hobby. Sorry, it's a bit boring answer. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the reasons. And sometimes it takes me less time to just draw something I have in my mind than to find the perfect image in the internet or somewhere else. Oh, but, that makes so much sense because that's where yeah. you go, like all the time gets wasted, right? You're like, it's not quite there <laughs> yet. Yeah, but I wish I could draw. Then I would. 
<laughs> when you that too. <laughs> it was a part that I was able to learn in my childhood and I basically did it ever since as a means of medi mediation or like meditation, no, meditation is the right word. Um, but the actual, one of the main reasons, not the most important one is um, German copyright laws because I don't want to be sued. Mm. <laughs> They're pretty yeah, strict. Yeah. So, yeah. Nobody can sue me if I do everything myself. Right. Because you own the rights. <laughs> you own the copyright. Yeah. <laughs> and that's boring. That's really boring. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I really loved it um, because it gives a personal touch and also it has more storytelling power, you know, because I mean, you could borrow the power from the other, you know, like creators, you know, like creativity and stuff like that but sometimes it has the limitations and when it comes to telling your own story um yeah. you want to you know like ex express more so yeah i i felt really you know like closer like when you were giving the talk and yeah and one of the talks you also gave was like about um you know like women and non-binary people in tech communities so yeah, yeah I actually like really wish to watch this talk, but somehow like I couldn't find from your website, you know, the recordings, but I was able to read the slides that you shared in there. And yeah, I was quite impressed that quite a couple of, let's say the phrases that you experienced probably or have heard from the others were something that I was not in my head so hard because I also have the similar experience and stuff like mm -hmm. that but of course we don't want to just focus on for something let's say negative experiences too but yeah. more in a position to see you know the um fact what are going on in our community so that we could make you know our communities even better place yeah yeah totally absolutely and um, maybe this is also a good point to start because we were just talking um, today about um, the Stack Overflow survey and the demographics in there. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar, but there's these big reports on the trends in the tech industry. State of JS is one that's, at least for us, like relevant. And the yeah, other RCSS. one is... Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, the Stack Overflow one that comes out every year. And um, they also have a demographic section and there they kind of, it's for me every single time is a little bit of a stab in the heart because I'm like, yeah. you cannot be serious. Like we can share these in a second, but it's like 5% female identifying and then yeah, like 1%. I guess, yeah. It's so bad. And it's like, <laughs> um, and that's like one more reason why it's so important that we like, Oh, amazing. The slides are here. Yeah. Um, and one more point where, where it's really important that we like talk about this and make sure that the few people we have that are underrepresented get as comfortable as possible so they don't leave. Right. So that there's at yeah. least like a few of us stay. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I think it's very important. Yeah. Oh, I got the kind of nice comment from the our friend Alvaro says like I get the same feeling every time I see the demographics so it seems like it's not just us and I'm so happy to say that actually because when it comes to I would say like these topics people tend to feel like okay should I put the kind of I don't know something a little bit you know like careful you know like shield so that you're not going to say something you know like hurting the others or yeah. you're going to be extra careful. I also feel that. Um, although, like, I, I, I belong, you know, like, these these groups. Um, but the point is, like, yes, um, for not hurting the others is important, too. But um, more than that, we need to have an open open place, open space Absolutely. to, you know, like, have a, have a talk, exchange, let's say, the experience, what are the things going on, and the information we know about it, also the opinion. But... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I feel like that's also where the communities come in, right? Like, Amuna, Absolutely. you mentioned you're part of many different communities, and I feel like, yes, um, it, we have to talk about it with everybody, but we also have to create safe spaces for the minorities to feel comfortable, right? What's your experience with uh, being in part of those communities? Also, you mentioned mentoring. Um, I'm really curious about that. So that's a really interesting question. And I've been at the organizer side for some meetups too. When it comes to meetups for especially women in tech, and we always thought about, okay, how should we handle it? Should it be a safe space where only 
the people of the group are in, may it be women, may it be um, queer people, may it be non-binary people, whatever you want to put in it, or should we open it up to the public? Because I guess such topics we discuss in such spaces are really interesting for the typical cis persons too at least to be educated, but also to become an ally. However, if you invite them in and open it to the public, it might lose the safe space in it. And I didn't find a complete example answer on it yet. Maybe it was like my idea to mix it up. So having events kind of of both directions, some closed, some things open. But like, I'm not sure if I have a definitive answer on that one because both sites of both advantages and disadvantages are really important to take into consideration. And um, this is the feedback I yeah, saw in mentoring too. So um, should we open that? Should we not? I think slightly yes. But um, what do you think about that? I feel like both has to exist. I understand that people um, feel sometimes excluded if it's women only or women and non-binary people only. And then they're like, yeah, but I want to learn. I want to be an ally. I want to be a part of it. Yes. But you never know what kind of experiences people had where they did not feel safe. And so there has to be these very safe spaces where literally only a certain group, like from my perspective, um, is and can support each other, share experiences openly without fear of somebody just taking it the wrong way, maybe, right? And then there has to be bigger, more open groups for everyone to join where also allies can learn because we need them. Like, oh, <laughs> for, sure. Sure. <laughs> for yeah. sure we need them. And so I feel like we have to have both. Um, and I think this, is, this was the intention of this stream when we set it up was to be one of these more fluid spaces where literally anybody can join, even though we call it girl code. As long as you don't take offense with joining a girl code, then, well, you're welcome, right? Um, so, yeah, yeah. Aretha, Aretha, what's your thought? Yeah, I really agree with your point, Josephine and Ramona. And what I wanted to add is that, of course, we do not want to abandon, you know, our allies because, I mean, the point is we all want to understand each other better so that, you know, like everyone would feel more comfortable, first of all, to create... Uh, well-balanced, you know, um, environment in the communities and also to openly exchange the, you know, experience, opinions, you know, everyone's voices, etc. So I feel that um, while we have a super safe, secure, you know, environment and a space for, you know, like, um, you know, women, non-binary, you know, like anyone uh, who would feel that they have experienced, you know, some, I don't know, like limitations or negative experiences, but we also need to have a place for um, our allies to feel that um, they have enough knowledge about, they have enough information being shared so that they, they feel, you know, comfortable to engage, you know, the, exchange the discussions. When it comes to mentoring, I still find like a little bit of challenge because let's say that, um, for example, imagine that you are a mentee, I guess that's the correct word to say, and your yeah. mentor is a man who has been working in the tech industry for many years, and he's white. In this case, it might be a little bit difficult, let's say, to understand like what would be the challenging um, for our cases, and maybe this mentor has not experienced like anything let's say the difficulties that are awaiting for us so in this case i would feel maybe like there should be like something better you know solution but from my side i do not know like at the moment but for when it comes to the communities i think like having you know the mixture you know like of every kind of backgrounds of the people at the same place um you know like along with the very safe places um would you know, like help allies to have better, you know, like knowledges. And they could also share, you know, like others' voices. Um, because I feel that if our allies, you know, like have someone close to them um, are women and non-binary people, in my opinion, um, they tend to have like better understanding or they tend to have like more interest to want to learn about it. 
So I think like um, when they already have a good, you know, like interest and have some passions, motivations that they want to, you know, get involved, then we need to have a place to welcome them and exchange that. Yeah, that's what I feel. Yeah. However, one important point in my head is like, if you can have the possibility to have a mentor, don't be shy to take it. So it's completely okay to ask for help because it will help you. Like my very first mentor was male, was white. However, like later I learned that it was someone who is a little neurodiverse. So there was a little diversity in it, but it helped me still. And it was a person who was aware of such things. So um, when it comes to um, being a typical um, mentor, if you're aware of struggles or if you like work through the tech industry with an open eye, then you can still be really helpful for people who need it. So please don't feel shy to be a mentor and please don't be shy to be a mentee because it can help you. Yeah, it's so important. And also, I mean, there's no shame in learning from them, right? And I feel like no um, men or any other majority should be uh, feel like they're, we still need their knowledge. We still want future generations to learn from them, right? So don't hold back at that particular area, just because you feel like it needs more. We do need more female mentors, of course, but if we want to get anywhere, we also, we need allies and that's where male mentors would come in as well. And I feel like if you have the chance, diversifying your mentorship is also great, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be um, a regular meeting where you meet in person every week. Maybe you can also talk to people who you admire, I don't know, on Twitter or on your favorite platform or yeah. have a video chat with them and just say like, hey, how did you solve, solve X, Y, Z? Like, please um, let me know. And so it can be, it doesn't have to be a linear thing. It can be different things and you can have like a network of different people that you learn from, right? Um, and so uh, I think that way you can get the most out of any kind of mentorship. Yeah, I actually have, sorry, maybe jumping off from the current topics that we were talking about, but I actually like had a couple of questions that I always wanted to ask to Ramona. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I take the opportunity. So um, it's really like timely, you know, questions because um, I and Josephine, we are um, planning to give a talk which is related to women and non-binary, you know, folks in the tech community and which is going to be in next week at CityJS Conf Berlin. And uh, while we were preparing our talk, um, I know that you've already given, you know, like such content of the top, uh, talk before. So I wanted to ask you, like when it comes to creating, you know, like, um, you know, like these content of the talks that you're going to give at the conferences, uh, what are the things you keep in your mind or what are the things that you try to, you know, like leave a message in there? Well, the most important point in, like in my heart is visibility. So um, this is something which is actually already achieved because you are visible, you are speakers, you are there. But still, this is like one of the main points I always try to yeah, come across with. So um, from my like story, I have a little bumpy way into tech, even if it's a German typical one by doing an apprenticeship. Um, it was in a toxic work environment and um, I didn't be, I didn't feel like I belong. And if I would have seen that there are women in tech which are vocal, which are on stages, which are role models basically, that would have helped me a lot. And basically that's the reason why I go onto a stage in the first place, like being visible for the hope that it helps someone at least a little, and um, to point that out inside of those talks, may it be being a woman, may it be having a different heritage, a different age, gender, whatever, um, is key. So if you can comfort this from a content side, that would be good. Um, from a research side, I tend to research my talks really thoroughly, especially because I like to use images, I like to use memes. And in this realm of content, um, there can be double meanings. So if you try to use such things, 
do your research and try to be really careful when it comes to not tipping onto anyone's toes by using memes, by using sayings, whatever comes into your mind. So it didn't happen to me, but it was something I tried to be cautious, like preactively, actually. Yeah. Yeah, really... I think it... Oh, sorry, Arisa, go ahead. No, 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 no worries, no worries. I feel like I've been speaking like a lot, so I want to hear <gasps> from you too, Josephine. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I think that's such a valid point. And usually what I like to do is run it by different people because different cultures might, like Germans are generally so direct and I'm always afraid of offending yeah. people. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's just try it with different audience. Let's see what a British person will think versus an Italian or another German, maybe my, I don't know. So like, let's see what, what happens. And then they like people who will give you honest feedback because it's so like in an intercultural context and all of our developer conferences are very diverse in terms of like native language and everything, right? So I yeah. want to make sure also if English isn't your first language, maybe maybe you're saying something wrong. Maybe you didn't even mean it. And then it's just, there's so much room for error. Yeah. That's a really, really good point. Test it and see that you're not, yeah, absolutely. It feels so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wanted to mention about, you know, when it comes to using the visualized uh, images and the memes, um, I have some, you know, like thoughts and the a bit of like experience. It's not like I got hurt by, you know, like someone or some stuff like that, but I sometimes felt that I wish, let's say like, um, you know, this person um, knew or are aware, uh, aware of, you know, the meanings of the memes or the backgrounds of that, because when it comes to let's say like using the famous memes um maybe like it's famous because it's been most like most used but when i see some of the memes that are based on the some of the tv series that i have watched before and i know it's quite um you know like disrespectful to the women or stuff like that i don't want to put the name on it because i know there are people who have worked hard on these TV series and stuff like that. But when I see oh. that, then I suddenly shut down, you know, to get the information because I feel like I don't like this TV series because it was like something against what I want to watch. So, yeah. And of course, yeah. like depending on the time, you know, when people were creating these memes and, you know, like using nowadays, um, oh, yeah. our understanding and what are considered as like, okay, in a society are way different because when I watched you know, like some of the um, TV shows or, you know, stuff like that when I was a child, um, you know, like when I watch now, I feel like, oh my God, I didn't know, like, it's so disturbing to me now when I watch, because I I mean, like our perspectives are different and now our, our society also is also different. So, yeah. No, that's true, that's true. And also if you put in like visuals, it's good to think about representation as well, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, most of us at tech conference will likely also show a lot of code maybe, but if you have any opportunity to put in pictures or to use examples of like real life people, think about who are you portraying maybe? Um, and just, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be, it, it can be whatever you wanna be, but if you reflect and make it a conscious decision, who or what you're showing, I feel like that already makes a big difference because then people might be like, oh, that person looks like me <laughs> a little bit, right? Um, so that can be super valuable. Um, I know that I felt like that in the beginning and Alvaro also said in the chat about representation, right? Because if you see people who look like you, um, it's a lot easier to feel like you belong. And that's a massive exactly. topic why also people leave again because they feel like they don't have a place here. Um, and I feel like we all have to work really, really hard as communities to make sure that folks feel like they belong if they wanted to. It can go that far as it comes to like conference lineups. If I see a lineup where there are just white male people, I was like, okay, so maybe the attendees are the same and I won't be that welcomed at the conference. Maybe might be a prejudice, of course, but it signalizes something. So it's something to be mindful about, I think, yeah. 
Yeah, when it comes to, let's say, seeing, you know, the faces on the speakers page for, I mean, for the conferences. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. When I see that I'm the only woman <laughs> on the speakers lineup, or sometimes like I was um, asked because the organization side noticed that, oh my God, we only have men. That's yeah. not really good representation of our, you know, like meetup events and the conferences. So I know it's really like not a nice way to put into, you know, like asking you, but can you join, <laughs> you know, uh, it's really like complicated feeling. I mean, it I is. would love to contribute. Yes. And I really appreciate that uh, they were being so honest and mostly like I would definitely love to help. But at the same time, I wish that, you know, this selections could be, you know, like modified a little bit earlier stage. But I totally understand they have like some limitations, situations that they couldn't prevent. So, yeah, it's complicated yeah. feelings. Go ahead. And just yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you interrupt. So I'm always <laughs> Uh, I have one prime example of that. Um, I started with unconferences and bar camps in my early speaker days, so, so to say. And there was one which was really great with a great audience. And like I scored the best talk of the first day, which was of course perfect. However, I wasn't able to enjoy that success or believe that it was my skills because the main sponsor of the unconference was a diversity group or however it's called so i was like okay did i won because i was good at it or did i won because they needed a woman to be on the first spot so that was just in my head so i don't see any uh bad intentions in it but it's something which might make it a bit difficult to see that someone is good i don't know <laughs> it was a little weird yeah. and it's I've, I've had a similar thing where like where they actually approach you and they're like yeah like uh, do you want to speak by the way we have like no other women so we would really appreciate if we could take your photo and put it here and here and here and use it for advertising and you're like yeah great like i like um, that you're thinking about it um but that puts a lot of pressure like <laughs> on us um, yeah. and, um it's the first step and now we need like 15 more steps too like because the problem is not that there are no diverse speakers um, the problem is elsewhere um, and I uh, I have a friend who organizes meetups in here in Hamburg but they're also streamed and she like wrote on her flag if, is that an English saying well it is in German it works in German her motto is that you can <laughs> have always diverse speakers and it's like she's making an amazing case for it right because at their meetups they always try to like have uh, different ages, different genders, different ethnicities, um, different abilities. And they have, they just go kind of um, on it from a different way. They don't say, we want the expert, but they say, wait, well, you have this great project. Well, you've never spoken before. Let's talk. What do you need? Right. And they really help people to give their first talk as well. And usually those are amazing. Um, and so, I feel like she's making a really, really great point and other speakers could take an example from that because the problem is not that there are no speakers. The problem is that maybe conference organizers are not looking hard enough. Um, yeah. That's my hot take for today. Very, very German, very direct. Um, I hope nobody's offended. <laughs> no, I mean, like, somebody needs to say that and you, you, you definitely were being brave to say that so I, I I mean like I really appreciate it because I have a bit of different you know like cultural background so it's harder to say that but I want to say so when I hear somebody um, is you know like telling the message that I always wanted to say then yeah I mean like it's really like nice thing so don't don't be don't be you know like <laughs> sorry or don't feel like oh am I saying too direct <laughs> Yeah. Always, yeah I, I, always, always too direct. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, I feel that. So I guess my first spontaneous idea on how to solve that might be anonymous call for papers. So you have no name, you have no picture, no gender, no cultural background, just 
like the talk abstract and then you choose from it and um, another thing is maybe reach out to like groups diversity groups there are many or um, I'm not sure if there's a English word for fine like um, gatherings to help you because there are people who are pretty good in um, getting diversity in it without like lowering chances for good topics in general. So that might be a good idea on how to approach that topic, I think, in my naive mind. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and I, I think... feel like, oh, sorry, Arisa, go ahead. Now, oh, no, 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 go ahead. Now go ahead. you definitely go ahead. <laughs> okay, then this time I take. <laughs> Very small, you know, like comment. Um, I, I, I think I've heard before, like somewhere that when it comes to job hunting, um, sending resumes, you know, like in the States, if I'm correct, like um, putting, let's say, like the age or stuff like that. Um, I mean, of course, you need to have the minimal information, your name and stuff like that. But, you know, like these kind of informations that are not necessary, you know, like being considered, you know, the um, job application process, um, you don't need to put it or actually it's kind of forbidden to put it. I'm not sure about it. I remember that because I'm so surprised. Um, when it comes to, you know, comparing to like where I came from, um, the Japanese, you know, culture to put the job applications are so different. They see the age because it's one of the important elements, surprisingly, very surprisingly, and especially for women. So, I mean, the reason is quite sad, so I don't want to state here, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, actually like blinding, you know, like out ourselves from some of the informations that are not necessary, you know, like on the process that we need to focus on would help people. So um, again, like what we were talking about, you know, like selecting, you know, the CFPs, um, you know, like with blinding, you know, some of unnecessary information to pick the topics might, could help, I, I feel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. It's the same in Germany here, everything is visible and people sometimes even, I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure you could sue for that, but you don't like because we're not the US you don't just sue for anything but, um, uh, but you um, people would even ask you about like family planning for example and that's so forbidden because it that is, is discrimination yeah. but people ask, people ask that um, and it's really like it's, it's so oh, yeah it gets me very worked up so oh, yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, but um, what are things that help you um, in terms of finding your place? Because Ramona, you're still you're still in the tech industry, even though you said you had a bit of a bumpy start. Like, what helped you, and what would you give kind of tips to other people um, if somebody's new and kind of struggling a little bit with that? Mm -hmm. So that. Uh a couple of parts in it the first one i'm a really stubborn person and i don't like to accept things as they are actually at one point it was like in my head okay you can wait for someone to fix your problems but then you need to be okay with waiting forever so i was like okay i need to find a way on changing things not only because of me because of other trainees too and i did i had a wonderful um friend who was together with me in college we, she had the same struggle, so we were able to like lift each other up if it got a little more difficult. So I said, try if there are people um, reaching out to you and giving like giving your hand, don't be shy to take it. And um, yeah, maybe find a little community which is really welcoming. And don't start with conferences first. Start with meetups, for example. There was one where they asked me to give a little keynote for their first meetup for women in tech, which I was, of course, really happy about. And I was like, okay, here in Western Germany, in North Westphalia, there's not that much of a tech community. So I was like, okay, maybe we have like 10 people in it. Still worth it because I love it. But um, I was a little scared that there are not that many women. But like, as I went there, we were like 40, 50 people from all ages all cultural backgrounds and I was so happy so try to see if there's a meetup group for women or even normal one you might be surprised that there are a lot of people already we don't know about it so that's the point why I like to highlight visibility of being a woman being non-binary being of cultural 
different cultural background is so important. Because like in another virtual meetup I attended, there were some students from high school age, which really said like, I don't feel like I belong because I never see it. I always see like the nerds. So um, yeah, it helped me to get this little switch inside of my head that there are women, there are people who I can see as a role model and people who help me like my mentors, which were there or like the mentor, which were female actually, which I met through all those community programs, which helped me a lot. So there are ways which will help you and don't be shy to take them. Starting small is definitely a really good point that you're making there, right? You don't have to go, if, especially if you're like a little bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> you have all the reason to be, it's a scary world out there. Um, no, but if, like, if it's intimidating to you, um, go very small. If you don't want to go to meetup, go one-on-one. -on -one. Like, um, make it as small as you need it to be. Um, and there's so many great platforms and ways to get in touch with people to do that. That's such a really good, good tip. Mm -hmm. um, and the good thing on meetup is if you are confident enough to go there as a speaker, you can be sure that the people who are there are there to hear you. They are not there to just fill a little gap in their schedule if they are in conference or something. They want to see you. They want to see you succeed. Nobody is there to see you fail. Um, it's just welcoming. So... That would be my first advice, especially for first time speakers, maybe. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, Arisa, do you have any uh, tips on how you started feeling like you belong? Um, you mean like when I started to feel like I belong to the communities, right? I would say like in my case, I started pretty much everything like virtually. So when I joined into the tech. I came from a very different background. I was a cabin attendant, so there is nothing has to do with the programming. So I first of all started, you know, like from a boot camp and started to work um, also virtually remote um, when things were not so, you know, like popular, popular, like doing the full remote work and joining into the communities, finding the communities also were in virtual. So probably like in this virtual shields that I always had kind of protected me in a good way because in the very, very beginning of my um, developer career, I really was not willing to, you know, like display my face on the internet. Um, there are several very different reasons. Um, again, coming from different cultural background. Um, in Japan, like I saw my very good friends, you know, like who are women or non-binary people, um, also very highly skilled, you know, like in, in tech, are harassed just because of the labels um, that, were, that were put by, you know, others. And people were making comments about, you know, like nothing has to do with, you know, like tech or their knowledge, but they were kind of um, putting the values based on these values. And I felt that uh, this shouldn't happen. And I do not have this, you know, very strong, you know, like mentality. So to pr prevent that happen, um, actually lots of people, like not just women and non-binary people, but even including guys um, in my country, they mm, put, you know, like something not um, their actual face or something yeah. just, I don't know, the images of their favorite characters or just the avatar. Um, maybe they have the different reasons, but at least one of the reason I was doing that um, to protect myself was because of it. But because I, yeah, because I could do this trick or use this trick, um, I felt that there is no way that people could make such kind of comments that would make me unnecessary, like cautious or you know stressed out about, and would be distracted, you know, like instead of focusing on something that I want to focus on. So. I had this kind of phase quite for long, so over, I would say, like four years. But when I became a DevRel, I cannot use this trick anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like, you're so good, but at some point you need to, you know, like, show up at the conference <laughs> when it comes to in-person and things became in-person. So I think in my case, I was able to um, start things very slowly to join the communities and also had the extra shields that I was could use, um, kind of like hiding, you know, the um, any elements that people could put the labels 
of me. So maybe that's why, like, since from the beginning, I felt that um, it's pretty much like comfortable as long as I do not need to, you know, like worry about like the risks that people would put me the labels. But after I put down these shields, um, I still felt comfortable, surprisingly. But maybe it's because the communities I belong, um, I, I belong are very welcome and open. And maybe some of the communities are still, you know, like working progress. Who knows? So yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned the shield. It's a little off topic, but I used to uh, do gaming for competitively manner still as a hobby for yeah. some time. And I really started to get shields up at that point because it sometimes it was enough to just hear my voice for comments. So, mm. oh my God, there's a girl who's gaming and she's skilled. Oh my God, that couldn't happen. Mm. And um, that was sometimes a little bit. It's actually the reason why I don't stream myself until now. Maybe I will um, change my mind there, but um, yeah, I totally feel you on that one. Yeah, that's so like, it makes me feel sick just hearing about it because it's 2023 and there is yeah. absolutely no reason to doubt a woman's or anybody's ability to do anything. Um, and yeah. It's just, I don't know, like, it's it's so sad that it still happens and that, like, for every single thing that I upload, I would, like, we discuss this internally as well, right? Like, am I going to share that with my face? What it, are the comments turned on? Is some, mm -hmm. because you see it, if it doesn't happen to yourself, you see it happen to other female creators and um, it's very intimidating. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah also we need to be a little bit aware of there could be the cultural differences when it comes to that part putting the labels on it mm -hmm. some people um they grew up with such culture so they're actually like not on purposely doing it for example like um again yeah. in my culture like people tend to make a compliment um about how they look so mm -hmm. it is something quite common so people do that sometimes, like more often than where I live here in Germany. So when I go home, I sometimes need to get used to it again. So mm. yeah, it's always like something we need to um, keep in your mind if people are like not doing on purposely. And if it's something that you should tell them that you don't feel comfortable or not. Usually I do. I don't feel comfortable, mm. but this depends. Yeah. yeah, totally. No, but I feel like, I mean, I... Yes, uh, I feel like you have a very valid point. I wish I had the patience. A lot of the time, I feel like it's not necessarily our job as the minority in this case yeah, to absolutely. educate. And it's, it's very generous if you decide to do that. And of course, that's like a very personal choice. I feel like my patience fluctuates <laughs> um, on whether or not I, I want to do that or not. Um, but yeah, it's, of course, people come from different backgrounds. In the end, if you put an opinion on the internet about a stranger, be kind, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, There's one so. point which makes me really optimistic, no matter the cultural background, because I've been like at my new job and at my former job, it was both a cross-cultural um, team I've been at. And I was the one to take care of apprentices and trainees. And the younger people are so much more aware. They are so much more careful when it comes to that. It's so great. So I don't need to be a pessimistic anymore. If you know what I mean? It's so, it's so cute. Sometimes yeah. you see what, what opinions they have. So there are like better people coming, if I can say it like that. I don't want to judge, but um, it was just wonderful to see it, that some, some stuff we needed to fight for are like common sense in the younger people already. Yeah. That's and it's true. so boy. And I feel like we can learn so much from them, right? Like just because we are sharing our experience does not mean that we don't we're not biased. We don't maybe do things yeah. wrong all the time. Um, so <laughs> we're all still learning, right? And I feel like we can especially learn from whoever is coming after, but um, all the time. Yeah, totally. Um, unfortunately, it's already time to wrap things up. This hour flew by so quickly. Oh, yeah. I cannot believe yeah. it. Um, yeah. But maybe we can gather um, 
some, oh, Roberto came by. Hi, Roberto. Um, we can gather some sh like last tips or positive outlooks because I feel like while we're sharing also some negative experiences, we want to end on a high note, right? We want to uh, we want to share something something positive. So maybe we can end with some tips or something to take away. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I have one. It was also a bar camp and unconference. I hope you are like an unconference or a bar camp is a conference where you don't have a schedule, but you go there, you propose your talk and you will be voted for. So only the talks which have enough votes get into the schedule just for context. And after being comfortable in meetups, I started with those. And at one, I was still really shy. And there was my mentor with me and my uh, and the organizer. And I was like, ha, ah, at that time I've been a quality engineer because like I did a little like, detour or a quality assurance. And he asked me really simple questions like, do you use, because I was like really hesitant to say, if I'm a developer, if I'm relevant to that conference, but he really were like, do you use code? Yeah, I do. Do you use an IDE? Yes. Do you use CLI? Yes. Then you're a developer, then you have something to say, go up to the stage. And of course that sounds pretty stupid, but at that point it really encouraged me to rethink this. Uh, I'm not good enough for it. Like maybe he he has a point. He's the organizer. He's experienced when it comes to selecting speakers. So actually, that was the point where I was giving my first conference talk and not only meetups. So that was so wonderful and so wholesome to me. And basically, it was one of the starting points of my career right now. So there are really great things. You just need to like take them. Maybe everyone needs a little push, you know, like good push yeah. from, you know, the others. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I it comes to the imposter syndrome and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> we could do like we actually had a um ha had an episode about imposter yeah. syndrome, like in one of the earlier episodes. But I feel like this topic we could, you know, like talk anytime. If we could no. talk about it once a week for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> true. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's very like uh, reluctant to say like we need to wrap up things, but yeah. I mean, like we have um, everyone has you know the time that they need to do stuff, and yeah. So I guess like I would take this chance to um, kind of announce like our next uh, live streaming. So it's gonna be like on twenty eighth, if I'm correct. Yes, on 28th uh, November. And the topic would be like announced pretty much soon. But yeah, hope you can, you know, like stay tuned and make sure to scan the QR code so that you're not going to miss, you know, like the reminders on your calendar. And we're going to stream like um, around the same time, 4 p.m., you know, Central European time zone for around like an hour or so. So yeah, hope to see you there. And yeah, I think that will conclude things and yeah. yeah i really wanted to say thank you so much ramona for joining with us yeah thank you, and for thank you everyone <laughs> yeah yeah and thank you everyone for joining and i really was happy to see active you know chats going on uh yeah let's keep in touch everyone yeah if you have any guest suggestions, topic suggestions, feedback, always get in touch. Um, and will Ramona and Arisa will see each other next week already in City JS. Yes. I'm so excited. Yeah. Like finally a real life thing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, we see a couple of guests, you know, like coming to City JS Berlin to Alien yeah. from Astro Team is also. So yeah, oh, we see you. Oh, that is yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, such a small world. <laughs> It's almost like yeah. a free city jazz meetup then. That's yeah. amazing. Um, it's going to be a little reunion. <laughs> yeah, then we can have a real coffee break. Or oh, yeah, break that's true. Or whatever. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, whatever Thank we name so it. Thank you so much, Ramona. It was such a pleasure to have you. Such a great Thank topic. Um, and yeah, have a great day, everybody. Have a great Enjoy day. Good afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye.